this evening. Central government steps into the parking meter debate. Early morning fire rips through several homes in Kitty. Sugar workers protest possible estate closures. Minister of State answers the question, why do the inactive public procurement commissioners draw super salaries? In the region in St. Lucia, Chamber of Commerce disagrees with IMF 2017 assessment, calling for fiscal responsibility. And internationally, more legal backlash against Trump's so-called Muslim ban. Also in this week's beautiful Guyana, join us as we visit the majestic Kaichur Falls. From Safe TV headquarters in South Rival Gardens, this is Safe TV Headline News with George Gonzalez. Headline News is now being streamed live on our YouTube channel, as well as our website, safetvganet.com. Join us. The clamping of vehicles and fining of motorists under the parking meter project is to be suspended pending post-implementation consultations. This according to Cabinet Secretary and Minister of State Joseph Harmon on Friday's post-Cabinet media briefing. Andrew P Weeks reports that Cabinet is taking the matter very seriously. Minister of State and Cabinet Secretary Joseph Harmon told the press that government will not micromanage the work of City Hall but has called on City Hall to ensure an acceptable outcome that will be beneficial to both sides. Harmon said following a meeting between the Georgetown Mayor and Tom Clark and President David Granger, the President asked the Council to examine the concerns raised by citizens on the parking meter contract, especially the clamping and fining of motor vehicles. My understanding is that the city has actually taken certain steps. Um, in fact, one of the first steps I understand that they have taken was to basically um, suspend the punitive aspects of, of the parking meter program. That is to say the clamping and so on of vehicles. I believe that they have indicated that that's going to be suspended and that they will engage with stakeholders um, to see how best the program of the parking meters can be adjusted. Mr. Harmon could not say the date when the suspension would take effect, but went on to state that a notice would come from City Hall. But Minister Harmon told the press of the plea City Hall made to the President in terms of what it takes to run a city with limited funds. The City Council, of course, made the, the, the plea that um, they still have to run a city. That you have a city that requires, citizens require um, resources and citizens require service from the city. Citizens require that the garbage is collected on a timely basis. Citizens require that streets are lit in a proper way, that streets are properly done, that they are marked, and several other services which the city has to provide for which sufficient funds do not come from a subvention from the government. It is recognized also that the city, the limits of the city had been expanded in a, a few years ago without the concomitant expansion of resources to the city. So you had a city that was responsible for a larger area but less resources. And so with less, we are expecting more from them. It is for this reason, Harmon said, that government understands that the council are persons who were elected by the citizens and the government is there to support the council. We made that very clear to the city that we are prepared to support them to ensure that the services which they have to provide to the citizens of this country, that they can provide those services in a timely manner. This City Council, of course, indicated that this, um, the parking meter, was one way of raising revenue to do its work. It is not as if this was revenue just to put into the tilly of the City Council, but that when they looked at the overall, the overall cost of running the city, they had a big gap between the resources which are available and the work which has to be done. And they are looking at finding creative ways of bridging that gap. So we, we believe that the, there's a, a healthy outcome. 
we recognize also that there's been protests and we, 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 we support the fact that citizens who feel aggrieved can come out and support and, and, and protest. We believe that is part of the democratic right and that is part of the democratic culture which we are fostering in this country. Protests against the parking meter project is growing, which is organized by the movement against parking meter project. The bylaw, as many believe, has prevented employees and customers from gaining access to establishment, causing large fees like $8,000. Harmon was asked to comment on the court case pending against City Hall. Well, I, I, I read something in the papers today, but I didn't know that there's an order as yet. There's an application. There's a matter before the court. I don't think that there's an order as such. But what I'm saying is that the city council, that they are engaging, they are engaging, um, they are engaging citizens. And that is the important thing. That what we want is an outcome that is acceptable to both sides. That is what we're looking for. Um, we're not looking for, for a court order and all of these different other issues. We're looking for an outcome that says, this is where we are, this is what the citizens require, and this is what we're trying to do, to try and try to find a medium. Reportedly, Justice Bassington Reynolds has ordered Communities Minister Ronald Bulkan to show cause why his approval of the bylaws should not be quashed. Andrew Weeks, Channel 2, Headline News. Thanks, Andrew. An early morning fire destroyed three buildings in Kitty, leaving millions in damage. Several families were left stunned and picking up the pieces after losing everything they own in a devastating fire this morning. At around 1 a.m., a fire started on Sandy Bab Street in Kitty. The flames ripped through the two adjacent homes to the building, destroying a car and a restaurant in the process. The large fire burned for about two hours. Despite the best efforts of the firefighters, all three buildings were completely gutted, leaving at least 14 people homeless. One of the persons left homeless, Keith Lashish, expressed pain over having lost all he owns. My house is completely engulfed in flames. I couldn't save anything. Nobody, no, none of the occupants within the building couldn't save anything. The guys, four apartments, two upstairs and two downstairs. Nobody couldn't save nothing. I heard that the, 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 the lady, the big woman that lived downstairs, at the front apartment downstairs, I heard she ran outside completely naked. It's my neighbor over the road there. To get some closer to that. What I own is what I got for me back here, buddy. Lashes, a former prison officer, questions why the government does not offer resources for victims of such tragedies. I would just like somebody from the Civil Defense Commission, you understand me, or somebody from the Ministry of Communities, just to come and talk to people who used to live in the building and, you know, they could see what assistance they could render to me, buddy. That's the most I could tell you. That's why I'm glad you come and talk to me. I want this thing on the news and I want to see what happens. The cause of the fire is currently unknown and investigations are ongoing. If you would like to help him or any of the other 13 people left homeless, please contact us at Channel 2 on Facebook or visit our website. At post-cabinet media briefing on Friday, Minister of State Joseph Harmon was asked by the press why the inactive public procurement commissioners draw super salaries when the commission is not fully staffed. Andrew Weeks reports that the minister also explained why government continues to grant its no objections to contract. Since last October, the public procurement commission was installed by President David Granger, but was told on Friday that the commission is drawing super salaries. Minister Harmon explains. Yes, the commissioners, um, the commissioners have to be paid. I believe they are being paid. I, I, I haven't seen a pay slip from anybody. But, um, but clearly from the time they were appointed, um, they are entitled to those salaries. Sources in the National Assembly's Public Accounts Committee told the Morale Waves Online News some time ago that Corbyn's salary as chairperson is likely to be about 1.3 million Ghana dollars plus security. Gopal's salary could be about 1.1 million plus telephone allowances. 
all the other commissioners could be earning at least $900,000 per month. Those commissioners who received the instruments of office from President David Granger are wife of former opposition leader Robert Corbyn, Carol Corbyn, University of Ghana lecturer and economist Sukrish Nalal Pasha, former Labour Minister under the PPC government, Nanda Gopal, Christian Labour College Principal Ivor English, and Attorney at Law Emily Dodson. They will be all entitled to duty-free concessions, entertainment allowances, and a telephone allowance of about 10,000 each, according to sources. When asked when Cabinet will cease from announcing its no objections to contract, which is supposed to be the job of the Public Procurement Commission, Harmon said, um, I think it is public knowledge now that um, they have been looking, advertising for staff for the Commission. I think a CEO and some other ancillary staff. Um, those matters, I understand, are well advanced. And, um, but I, I cannot give you a specific timeline when this is going to be finished. But certainly once the Public Procurement Commission says to us that we are ready to function, then Cabinet will cease doing anything in that regard. Harmon argued that the PPC will not hold up the function of government because they are not ready to take up their mandate. He explains why. But in the meantime, since these are uh, public infrastructure projects that have to be executed, um, we cannot basically just sit and wait. Um, we had an early budget in um, 20, our 2017 budget was passed in 2016, and therefore the, the intention is to ensure that these public infrastructure projects that they can be off and running very early. Um, you can recognize that from the number of advertisements you see in the newspapers on a daily basis that the ministries have actually gotten their act together and they're actually putting out requests or, um, uh, for bids and so on that are always it's out there right now. Um, so I would say that once the Public Procurement Commission indicates that they're ready, then Cabinet basically will pull back. That's one. Andrew Weeks, Channel 2, Headline News. Thanks, Andrew. Coming up on Headline News after the break, Rose Hall sugar workers stage large protests and Parliament debates food and safety bill. Sometimes there's just too much information to keep up with when you're pregnant. What you should and should not eat, what kind of exercise is right for you, how to handle mood changes, even how to determine when it's time for delivery. Don't let your pregnancy be a burden. Watch The Baby Story on Safe TV Channel 2 every weekday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Now you can know all you need to know from conception to delivery when you watch The Baby Story on Safe TV Channel 2. Need a ride around town and beyond? Look no further than Oasis Ride Taxi Service. With affordable prices and some of the best drivers in the business, we've been delivering prompt and reliable service to Guyana for over 16 years. We also offer tours, chauffeur service, and even car rentals. You can call us at 231-5554 or 225-5594. 5496. For deals, specials, and more information, find our page on Facebook. Always just ride taxi service. Let's go. Seems like people will try just about anything to lose weight these days. But nothing works better than proper dieting and exercise. So if you're guilty of eating the wrong foods, not finding time to exercise, or can't afford a gym, join Safe TV Channel 2 for Body and Spirit. Body and spirit. Aerobics workout with Dick Nunez. Hello, I'm Dick Nunez. Welcome to Body and Spirit Aerobics. Weekday mornings from 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Don't hesitate. Act now because your greatest wealth is your health. Your this place is really hot. What's wrong with your AC? It's not working. Well, we wouldn't be able to continue this meeting anymore because this place is extremely hot. Wait, 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 please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, what's the dinner? I had a hard day. 
I'm sorry you have a hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Churchtown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. On Wednesday afternoon, workers staged a picketing exercise outside of the state's office opposing the proposal to close Rose Hall at year end. More than 2,400 workers of the Rose Hall estate in Kanji are in fear of displacement amid reports about the entity getting out of the cane operations under, di under the diversification plans of the Guyana Sugar Corporation. Field Secretary for the estate, Naisham Diaram, expressed grave concern for the future of their jobs. If Rose Hall goes, according to Diaram, the nearby town will also suffer. New Amsterdam depends heavily on that estate to sustain commercial activity. Guy Suko and the government are considering shrinking the existing estates to three, Wales Eye Flood, Albion, Rose Hall, and Blairmont. Meanwhile, the sugar workers at the Wales estate continued a fourth day of protest, voicing their displeasure against Guy Suko's non-payment of severance packages. As such, the workers are making moves to extend their protest actions to the capital city of Georgetown to bring more attention to their ongoing plight. Minister of Agriculture Noel Holder took the opposition's advice and referred the food safety bill to a special select committee. The bill was deferred on Thursday after a late-night debate in the National Assembly on its importance and possible loopholes or rigorous measures. The Animal Welfare Bill 2016 was read for a second time on Thursday in the National Assembly, where the opposition speakers called for more consultations to be done, as they said the most affected groups of citizens, farmers, were not aware of its implications. Those implications included draconian measures that can make the lives of farmers more difficult and does not address pertinent issues like Clause 4 of the bill, which identifies prohibited acts and provides a fine of 100,000 Ghana dollars and imprisonment for six months where a person breaks them. And the bill speaks about um, resting points. We're debating a bill about resting points and to the best of my knowledge, sir, and I travel extensively in the agriculture areas. I haven't seen the construction of any resting points anywhere along the routes that farmers will use to get from the fields to the eventual uh, abattoir or places that they have to take them. So we're talking about a bill that is addressing legal requirements and the physical infrastructure is not in place to give effect mm -hmm. to the requirements that we are demanding of the farmers and the livestock owners. And the fine, sir, it's not a case that this bill is providing, let's say, for some amount of leniency to our agriculture producers. So let's say, sir, that in the event of a forced offense, you're fined $5,000, second offense, $20,000, third offense, well, then it can go to $100,000. So what is proposed here is a draconian fine plus imprisonment. The government side, led by Agriculture Minister Noel Holder, said it would improve the welfare of animals in Guyana and ensure that their care and preparations for sale is on par with international standards. Further, Minister Holder said the bill seeks to reform the way animal welfare is approached in Guyana. It also presents a more contemporary regulations that should be followed in order to improve animal health and safety. Minister Holder also spoke of the danger and public health risk and animal welfare where food and safety are concerned. Mr. Speaker, the production of safe food is a matter of shared responsibilities between all actors involved. Understanding of each other's responsibilities with effective control, monitoring, and legislation provides the guarantee required through the Guyana Livestock Development Authority. Mr. Speaker, animal welfare is important for health, commercial, and ethical reasons. For instance, one of the issues on our current health agenda is antimicrobial resistance. That is, the ability of a microorganism, like bacteria, 
viruses, and some parasites. To stop an antimicrobial, such as antibiotics, antivirals, and anti-malarial drugs, from working against it. As a result, standard treatments become ineffective, infections persist, and may spread to others. The bill was first drafted in 2011 to fulfill Ghana's readiness to access the export market for non-traditional agricultural products, which was driven by the Agricultural Export Diversification Project funded by the Inter-American Development Bank, says Minister Holder. He said while the bill was discussed in Cabinet in 2014, it was never brought before the House. PPC MP Dharam Kumar Sharma later disputed this claim while stating that the bill was not taken to Cabinet for discussion under the former government since it had not received the widest possible consultation. Sirad said that he had discussions with many persons and the common thread was that the bill was a very complex one and that they were ignorant of any consultation as to what is proposed in the bill. And I say that, sir, with best of intentions, and this bill should not be contentious. And I would put the minister on notice from the onset, sir, that we intend to move that this bill go to a select committee so as to benefit fully from the participation of the target groups to make this realistic. Sir, the minister said that this bill was taken to the cabinet in 2014. The concerns expressed by the opposition were not in vain as the government, in a surprise move, agreed to have the bill sent to a special select committee. The National Assembly also sent the animal welfare bill to a special select committee to allow for national consultation and input. The bill intends to reform Ghana's animal welfare laws in ways that are synonymous with European standard as to promote trade. The Animal Welfare Bill 2016 seeks to reform the way animal welfare is approached in Ghana by presenting more contemporary regulations that should be followed in order to improve animal health and safety. The bill also includes several requirements that ensure the protection and well-being of domestic animals, especially with regards to their shelter, food, supply, and human treatment. Andrew Weeks, Channel 2, Headline News. Thanks, Andrew. Danian Anthony Jagdio of Williamsburg Village Quarantine was murdered on Wednesday, but the family of the beloved phone card vendor may soon receive justice. Homicide detectives investigating Jagdio's murder have so far arrested eight suspects, all of whom are from Region 6. They are between the ages of 19 to 34. A search of one of the suspects' home revealed a 32 caliber revolver and two matching rounds. A gray Toyota sedan matching the description of the car allegedly used after the commission of the crime has also been detained. The motorcycle that was abandoned by the suspects has been identified by a quarantine resident who alleged that it was stolen from his yard over a week ago. Jack Deal was murdered in cold blood after he was trailed from Skeldon after he made a drop off of phone cards at a shop. The vehicle reportedly trailed him to adventure where he was eventually shot while the perpetrators grabbed his bag containing phone cards and cash. The men escaped on a motorcycle and later abandoned it at Friendship Village Quarantine where they were picked up by the Allianz. A post-mortem examination was done yesterday. It revealed that Jagdeo was shot three times with two bullets extracted from him. Still ahead, our regional news, our international news, and beautiful Guyana. Sometimes there's just too much information to keep up with when you're pregnant. What you should and should not eat, what kind of exercise is right for you, how to handle mood changes, even how to determine when it's time for delivery. Don't let your pregnancy be a burden. Watch The Baby Story on Safe TV Channel 2 every weekday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Now you can know all you need to know from conception to delivery when you watch The Baby Story on Safe TV. Channel 2. Need a ride around town and beyond? Look no further than Oasis Ride Taxi Service. With affordable prices and some of the best drivers in the business, we've been delivering prompt and reliable service to Guyana for over 16 years. We also offer tours, chauffeur service, 
and even car rentals. You can call us at 231-5554 or 225-5496. For deals, specials, and more information, find our page on Facebook. Always it's Ride Taxi Service. Let's go. Seems like people will try just about anything to lose weight these days. But nothing works better than proper dieting and exercise. So if you're guilty of eating the wrong foods, not finding time to exercise or can't afford the gym, join Safe TV Channel 2 for Body and Spirit. Body and spirit. Aerobics workout with Dick Nunez. Hello, I'm Dick Nunez. Welcome to Body and Spirit Aerobics. Weekday mornings from 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Don't hesitate. Act now because your greatest wealth is your health. Your this place is really hot. What's wrong with your AC? It's not working. Well, we wouldn't be able to continue this meeting anymore because this place is extremely hot. Wait, wait, wait. Please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, what's for dinner? I have a hard day. I'm sorry you have a hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Churchtown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. In news from the region now, in St. Lucia, the Chamber of Commerce has suggested the 2017 International Mon Monetary Fund conclusions on the economy may not tell the entire story. The Chamber has called for greater fiscal consideration by domestic economic authorities. HCS News Force reports. It was a civil DSH meeting in the Viewfort community on Wednesday, February 8th. Members of the business community gathered to hear from officials of Invest St. Lucia on the 2.6 billion US dollar deal. The deal is the first major investment signed by the Alan Chastney administration since taking up office in June 2016 and has been controversial from the time it was unveiled. With so much back and forth on the deal and many lingering questions, the government of St. Lucia has embarked on a series of public consultations to address the issue. The goal of the meetings is clear. But for Leroy James, the latest gathering did nothing to answer his many burning questions on the DSH deal. Because I hear a lot of things outside there, a lot of news out there. And um, whatever, whatever I'm hearing is very confusing. So today I thought we would have heard something that would put the record straight. But it's not coming from the table. Cynthia Joseph says the presenters sought to lay down the timeline for various components of the project. She says the meeting will be useful in helping people to come to their own conclusions about the investment. Now I have actually understood um, what aspects of the project will be undertaken in the first phase, in the second phase, in the third phase, and I, I appreciate so as the consultations go along, I will be happy and I will be able to decide for myself where this project stands as it relates to Viewfort. Chamber officials say with the myriad of issues surrounding the DSH deal, it was important for members of the business community to air their concerns and have their questions answered. I'm trying to better understand what are the um, concerns, what are the opportunities, what are the threats and how these uh, are going to be dealt with. We hope that this is just one in a series of um, encounters and dialogues on the subject so that um, everyone could better understand what is happening and they could see what role and what benefits they may derive and what are the concerns with, the, with, this, with this program. Community meetings will continue with various target groups. The public information campaign has included sit-downs with heads of town councils and planned meetings with youth-based organizations. And internationally, on Thursday night, three federal judges unanimously agreed to restore President Donald Trump's controversial travel ban restricting refugees and travel by immigrants from a number of Muslim-majority countries. CNN reports. 
The Trump administration suffering a major blow, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals unanimously refusing to reinstate the president's controversial travel ban. The three-judge panel finding the administration failed to provide sufficient evidence to justify an urgent need for the executive order to be reinstated. The president immediately responding on Twitter, writing in all caps, See you in court. The security of our nation is at stake, without specifying if that means the Supreme Court, and again questioning the impartiality of the appellate court. It's a political decision, and we're going to see them in court, and I look forward to doing it. Trump accusing the judges of being biased, despite the fact that the Ninth Circuit judges were appointed by both Democratic and Republican presidents. The court also rejecting the administration's argument that the president can act without judicial review on issues of national security. Are you arguing then that the president's decision in that regard is unreviewable? The, uh, yes. But the battle over the travel ban is far from over. We will get our day in court and have an opportunity to argue this on the marriage that we will prevail. We have seen him in court twice and we're two for two. All this coming as Trump's pick for the Supreme Court, Neil Gorsuch, tells senators that attacks from the judiciary are disheartening and demoralizing. News of these comments prompted Trump to lash out at one Democratic senator who met with Gorsuch privately. His comments were misrepresented, and what you should do is ask Senator Blumenthal about his Vietnam record that didn't exist after years of saying it did. The White House is not disputing the comments, but claims they were not directed at Trump's attacks on federal judges. The judge was very clear that he was not commenting on any specific matter. He literally went out of his way to say, I'm not commenting on a specific instance. Senator Blumenthal said he disagreed on Anderson Cooper last night. Was Gorsuch talking in general terms? Indisputably. He was talking about President Donald Trump's attacks on the judiciary. It is called one of the natural wonders of the world, the Kite Share Falls. In this week's edition of Beautiful Guyana, an airline pilot, Captain John, gives us his story about the falls through his own eyes. My name is Captain John, and this is my offer. Each month, I take myself and hundreds of passengers to some of the most exciting places on Earth. Some you've heard about, some off the beaten path. Let me show you the world from my eyes. It won't be scripted. It'll be unique and a lot of fun. I do fly to unique places, but perhaps one of the most unique places is Guyana. I'm in Georgetown right now, the capital. Timory, the airport's about 20 miles up the road. This place is full of diverse cultures, full of Dutch and British influence. But for the last 30 years, they've been on their own and they're searching for their own voice. And they're right now, this moment about to take off in all aspects of their economy, especially tourism. Specifically, ecotourism. Every country has a must see. And for Guyana, it's Kaichir Falls. There are several ways to get to the falls. We've only got two days, so we're gonna take the 45 minute flight from Timaray Airfield, but you can four wheel it to the falls or you can hike it. But for that, Give yourself a week. Flight itself was a blast, but the first time you see the falls, that's amazing. Anyone who knows me will tell you I've always got something to say. But as we walked a few hundred yards to the falls, even I was wondering, how do you describe the indescribable? You know, when we heard we were gonna to come to the falls, I mean, that's nice, I wanna to go to the falls, but it's really, it wasn't that big of a deal. You know, I thought, you know, I've seen falls before, but this is spectacular. Seriously, there is nothing like 822 feet of falling water, nothing like it. It's, it's, a, it's a bucket list moment, something else. What was nice about coming to the falls is it is kind of an intimate moment. There's only nine of us in the airplane. So we come out here, there's not a whole lot of tours to, to kind of elbow through, you have this place to yourself. Where you can just kind of take your time, get your pictures, and, and you're kind of like a little family here just for this little two or three hour tour. And just remember, this is raw nature. How close you get is up to you. 
Yes, from an Australian perspective, what do you think of Diana so far? Um, yeah, it's a great country. People are really, really friendly. Um, definitely reminds me much more of Africa and the Caribbean than, than South America in terms of its influences, music and food and that sort of thing. A lot of nature, which is pretty untouched by tourists. So yeah, I really like it. Now the falls here, did it meet your, uh, did you, did it meet your expectations? Definitely, absolutely beautiful. Um, pretty exciting how you can get really up close to it. Um, and the surrounding area with the, with the valleys and the rainbow, it's just absolutely beautiful. This is one of the natural wonders of the world. And that's Channel 2 Headline News for this Friday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to find Channel 2 Headline News on Facebook, YouTube, and SafeTVGhana.com. You can also tune in at 6.30 Sunday morning for a rebroadcast and Monday evening at 7 o'clock for more news. For now, I'm George Gonzalez, signing out from this newscast. Thank you for welcoming us into your homes, and do have a blessed weekend.